Hi guys, hope everyone's well and welcome back to the Improvement Podcast. So in this episode today, I'm going to touch on why you should spend your time bulking. So first of all, why why would you bulk? Why would you spend time in a gaining phase in the first place? So when you are when you basically are wanting to build as much tissue as possible, the place where we can do so best is in a surplus. So that's where the physique improvements are made. Obviously, you can improve at maintenance, but it's not the best position possible to build muscle tissue. You're not in the optimal position to build muscle. And as a result, if you spend your time at maintenance or consistently dieting and never bulking, your progress will somewhat reflect that. So if you are like relatively lean and you want to build as much muscle as you can, then bulking's a good idea or entering and gaining phase, whatever you want to call it. And the reason why I say if you're relatively lean is if you aren't, then it might not be a good time to maybe start a gaining phase just because you want a relatively lean start point so you can push your body weight up effectively without gaining too much body fat. So in terms of why we build muscle best when we're in a surplus or when we're bulking. So we've basically got an excess of energy availability. If you think about it, it's like when we are bulking, we're, we're consuming more calories than we're burning which puts us in the best position possible to actually have the resources available to build muscle. And in terms of why else is when we are pushing body weight up, it allows greater stability. And what I mean by that is when we are in a like gaining phase and we're getting a bit fluffier, that's kind of a body weight where we can perform a bit better. Weight does move weight to some extent and it just allows more stability and leverage and it's easier to basically progress your lifts. As a result, more muscle tissue will be shown when you diet down again and you'll have more muscle to show for it because if you can progress your lifts with the same form over time, then that's going to equate to more muscle crantage you're eating in a surplus. And doing that's much harder if you're sitting at maintenance and your body weight's not that heavy because if you've ever carried out a dieting phase, what you find is sometimes it can be a bit hard to hold on to performance in certain areas and to keep progressing, and especially things like pressing movements. So if you are consistently in a deficit then or at maintenance, then you won't be able to do so effectively. And the reason we don't build muscle effectively when we're in a dieting phase is if you think about what's happening in a dieting phase, you are, you're literally not eating enough to maintain your weight, which your body doesn't want. That's kind of, your body looks at that as kind of a bad thing. And as a result, like, if you think about it, see if you were kind of didn't have enough resources to build muscle or didn't have enough food to build muscle and you were dieting, uh, then your body's not wanting to build muscle because it's thinking, right, I need to preserve energy. It's not going to build muscle, which is a task that is energy demanding. So it prioritizes simply, like, what, simply kind of maintaining the muscle it has and doesn't want to build muscle if that makes sense which is why like we don't really build muscle as effectively in a deficit and it's harder to do something called spike muscle protein synthesis to then grow muscle when we're in a dieting phase and yeah so if you are lean if you are in a good body composition to kind of carry out a gaining phase and it's something I'd highly recommend doing granted you believe you can take the body weight off and you want to maximize muscle growth and if you are wanting to kind of start a gaining phase in terms of how fast you should gain it's dependent on many factors like the timeline you look to gain for how you're looking visually on a weekly basis what your starting points like how confident you are in your ability to diet and for the most part like what i mean by your starting point is see if you're starting shredded like me oh not saying I was shredded I could have had more body fat to take off but at the end of my last competition season my last contest prep if I well, what I did start a gaining phase there I managed to push my body weight up to around about 40 pounds above my stage weight whereas if let's say I started a gaining phase 20, 20 pounds heavier than that then it wouldn't be a good idea to push up maybe 40 pounds. Maybe I'd want to push up slightly less. What I'm saying is you don't want to push up as maybe heavy if you aren't starting as lean because it means you've got maybe excessive body fat levels which can't be great for our ability to build muscle. Utilise carbohydrates and keep our like just overall health and energy levels in a good spot really. So yeah, it, it depends really on many factors. But if you're looking leaner 
on a weekly basis and you're looking great, you're gaining at like appropriate rate, then you don't need to slow it down if that makes sense. So that's why there's no there's no set rate again. Like especially if like I've got a client who lets in nails every single one of their variables, trains like an animal, versus a client who maybe doesn't always hit the gym, misses sessions, doesn't train that hard, then their ability to build muscle is going to be different. So I'd probably favour a slower rate again with the individual that is kind of not ticking their boxes too well and not really on the ball in comparison to the person who's constantly like nailing all their variables because they're going to have a greater ability to build muscle. Something else to consider as well is your experience. Like if you are really experienced then you might not think it's worth, let's say you push your body up, let's say you gain a kilo a week, then that's going to put you at like 15 weeks and then you might have to diet down again. Whereas if you gain half a kilo, then you can gain for a longer period. So if, let's say, you're really experienced, the overall amount of muscle you can build is less in like the same space of time, then you might want to take a slower approach just because there's no point throwing a lot of body fat on at once just to take it off. Whereas you might benefit from that faster approach if you've got a lot of muscle you can build uh, because you're not going to gain as much body fat from gaining that weight, if that makes sense. Uh, so there's no ultimately like set figure, but around one point one to two percent of your body weight a month is a reasonable spot, if I had to say really. And as for how much you should gain, so how much body weight should you gain from maybe the start of your bulk to the end? Like I said, it depends on your start point, but basically as much as possible before body fat gets too high. And the reason being is, if like we just we want to spend as long as possible bulking, we want to bulk as basically much as we can without having any negative effects of that. And if, let's say, you don't gain much weight, then you're, like I said, you're not going to get into that position where you've got like a lot of leverage, you've got a lot of stability, and you can perform really well on your lifts that require more stability. Whereas if you push your body weight up more, you'll kind of visit that place, if that makes sense. So, yeah, 10 to 15 kilos is a great amount to gain. But again, if body composition is in a good spot, why stop? And if body composition is in a poor spot, then why keep going? Uh, so that's, again, rough figure. So it depends how lean you're starting and how much muscle you build throughout the face. Because if, let's say, if someone built, let's say, five kilos of muscle, then they've only got, then they're, they're going to have a leaner body composition at the end of it. So they could maybe keep gaining more. Whereas if someone gained only a kilo of muscle throughout the phase, then that's going to influence things. And also, like, what's your goal after the gaining phase? If, let's say, like I'm starting contest prep in February and right now I'm doing a mini diet. reason I'm doing my mini diet is so that when I start gaining again, I don't get too heavy. So I don't have as much to take off at once. What I mean by this is I plan on getting to around about 190 and then dieting down to around about 160. Whereas if I, let's say, if I didn't do this diet and I started at just peak bulk, then I'd be taking off instead of the 30 pounds i'd be like dieting off 50 pounds so something to consider with how much you should gain is what's your goals after the diet after the bulk sorry have you got any immediate short-term goals when it comes to like a photo shoot or being really lean for something or are you just concerned about gaining as much muscle as you can uh, and if the second answer is applicable then you might not have to worry about maybe pushing a bit heavy because you know you've not got like a event or something you need to get really lean for at the end of it so you can get a bit further away from that low body fat percentage and not really have to worry about the consequences because you can also you can always do a diet and then bulk a bit more and then diet again in the future so that you can start relatively lean for whatever kind of event or goal you have when it comes to getting a low level of body fat so yeah basically gaining is gain as much as you can without getting too fluffy and without kind of derailing potential potential like uh, events and goals moving forwards and just putting yourself in a good position to maybe start it because something to remember is what you put on you need to take off again so if you aren't confident in your ability to diet or if you aren't wanting to do like an extensive dieting phase then you might not want to uh, basically gain as much but the downside to that is again we don't build muscle the best at maintenance so I think cycling through gaining phases and dieting phases is going to yield better results than sitting at maintenance for forever really or a long period anyway and something very important to consider as well is like I said we want to spend our time bulking that's where we progress the most so 
As a result of that, we don't want to just bulk, we want to have a good ratio between bulking and other phases throughout the year, uh, throughout our training. And what I mean by that is, obviously, there's maintenance when you're purposely dieting. Sorry, there's maintaining maintenance when you're purposely holding your body weight. There's dieting when you're purposely dropping your body weight. So we want to spend a good ratio of time between bulking and these other phases. And what that basically looks like is spending as long as possible in a gaining phase and as little as possible in dieting phases and maintenance phases. Because again, the more time we can spend gaining, the more time we're spending in a phase where we're productive to basically build muscle. So a good kind of ballpark or rough figure is spending like three quarters of your time gaining and what I mean by that is spending like nine months gaining or bulking and then spending three months dieting. So as you kind of see here this means you're spending 40 weeks in a great position to build muscle and then only 12 weeks in a position where you're not building muscle too well. That's a great ratio to be at whereas if you're in the opposite then you're wasting three quarters of your time uh, dieting basically. So we want a good ratio between it so if you can spend something like nine months bulking or three months dieting or something like three months bulking, one month dieting, something like that, that would be absolutely amazing for your progress if you want to gain as much muscle as possible. So there's a bit of wiggle room. You don't need to do it for nine months. It depends where your start point's at, how fast you gain. And if you've got any signs to pull back, and what I mean by signs to pull back is if you are finding your appetites absolutely in the gutters, your digestion's poor, you are feeling sluggish in the gym, your body fat levels are getting out of hand, then you don't need to gain for nine months and that might not be a right choice to make. Whereas if you get to the nine month mark and you think, right, it doesn't align to me to start, align with me starting dieting now. What I mean by that is, let's say it's, let's say it's started December, it's been nine months then it's probably not a great time to diet. You've got Christmas, you've got New Year, you've got other events in December. So what you could do is just gain for that extra month or maintain your body weight and then make sure the time aligns for you to diet, meaning diet when it comes to January and then you're in a good position to diet when you've not got any interruptions on. But basically, we want the ratios heavily weighted towards where we progress, where we're in a good position to build muscle, which is when we are in a gaining phase. So that's the position we want to put ourselves in for as long as we possibly can. And like I said, this is if you want to build as much muscle as possible. If you don't want, if you maybe want to go to the gym, build muscle, but you, you aren't wanting to spend time purposely eating more and gaining muscle and body fat, obviously, and then having to diet off again, you can just set up maintenance. Uh, however, do realize you are limiting your progress. And another reason why, like, I, I, I think it is good to spend your time gaining is like the the benefits of that long term are so much higher than setting up maintenance. For example, like you could set a maintenance and let's say you gain, this is just like just an absolutely random figure. Let's say you gain a kilo of muscle in a year because you're just maintaining, or let's say you spend a gaining phase and you gain maybe four kilos of muscle then yes, you might be nice and lean, but the person who spends the time gaining, gains four kilos of muscle, then diets back down. In that year time, when they diet back down to the same body, or not even the same body weight, to the same body fat levels, they'll be heavier, they'll have a greater physique to show for it, they'll have more muscle, they'll look look better. And what I basically mean by that is the more muscle you have, the better you'll look at a higher body fat percentage. The easier it generally is to maintain a low body fat percentage if you've got more muscle. Uh, especially if you're in the early years of training, I think it pays off massively to spend your time bulking because there's so much benefit of it. Like, and if you keep gaining muscle and muscle, like throughout your gaining phases, you'll look better and better. You won't start, you'll always get soft if you keep gaining and you'll lose lines, lose detail, but not quite as much. You'll start to see more definition. You'll start to still have a, a smaller waist and have more kind of pop to your shoulders, to your legs and that. And more detail at a higher body fat, really. So it means that you can ultimately sacrifice looking good short term to then look good long term, which is why it's good to spend time in that gaining phase. So yeah, something to consider is if bulking is right for yourself. So it might not be right for yourself if you might not have the discipline to 
to basically diet and take the body fat off effectively. It might not be right for yourself if you don't have consistency with your training. Because if, let's say, you're bulking and you've not got consistency with your training, then what, where do you think the body weight's going to go if you are half-assing your training, not putting much effort in, skipping sessions? What do you think's going to happen? Where's that body weight going to go? It's not going to go towards muscle. It's not going to be partitioned towards muscle growth. It's going to be tar- partitioned... Sorry. It's going to be partitioned towards putting on body fat. So if you aren't, let's say, working really hard and got everything in a good spot, then you might want to just spend time at maintenance for that reason instead. And like I said, how confident you are on your ability to take it off. So if you, let's say, are fine dieting, you're comfortable with your ability to diet and you think you can take it off while adhering to a diet, then it might be right to do a gaining phase. Whereas if you aren't confident with it, then maybe you could either just bulk but gain less body weight so you don't have as much to take off and it's maybe not as daunting, it's not as big a step for your first gaining phase or what you could do is get someone's help and guidance and accountability to help you do so. Uh, so yeah, shameless plug with the coaching there. If you are wanting help dieting, gaining or simply improving how you're looking at maintenance, then reach out from a coaching service and they'll happily help or if you have any performance related goals in the gym. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed the episode. I think that's everything regarding bulking, really. I can maybe jump into another another episode or two on like how to kind of get the most out of your gaining phases, which I think is something that is super valuable and I believe I could offer some good insight with because without my own horn, I think I've made pretty decent improvements throughout my gaining phase just there. And a, a relatively short period of time between stepping off stage last year and this year, so... Yeah, I think I could have some good insight to offer in regards to that. But hope you've enjoyed the episode. Thank you very much for everyone watching and hope everyone has the great rest of their day.